In this video, I will share some tips and techniques on how to pipe soap. There are a few things that you will need to get started, and some other things are more for advanced techniques. In the link down below, you will find what you need to get started. The piping tips determine the shape of your piping, and there are hundreds of different tips. It's a good idea starting out with very large tips, as they make it easier to pipe. Of course, all types of tips come in different sizes. Usually the tip model and the sizes are engraved on the tip itself, and sometimes even the width of the opening. Here you can see the very same tip, very large and very small. There are specialized tips, like leaf tips, as you can see here, in different sizes and variations, and we will see how this works in just a moment. Other advanced tips are the petal tips to pipe individual flowers using a piping nail. This is not a beginner technique though. There are different piping bags to choose from in terms of material and size. Some are disposable, like this one here. Make sure you opt for a sturdy one. Soap is very heavy as opposed to cream and the bag can burst. Here are some non-disposable ones. This one here is made of silicone and these white ones are made of cloth. Use the bag you feel more comfortable with. It's a matter of personal preference. A coupler is a very practical device if you want to use different nozzles without making separate piping bags for the different nozzles. There are different sizes for different tip ranges. You simply insert the bottom part of the coupler in your bag and then you add the tip with the ring of the coupler to screw the tip in place. Now you can change the piping tip anytime you want. Be sure to verify if the tips you want to use really fit into the couplers you have before starting to pipe. This is a coupler for rather small tips. And this one here is a medium size. And these here are for rushing piping tips that are usually larger. It also has a special coupler designed for multicolored piping tips. The way I like to prepare my piping bag is to insert the nozzle I need. Then twist it and turn it facing up and then place it into a tall glass or a pitcher. If you use a coupler, you can prepare it the exact same way. Now you can fill the bag comfortably and the butter won't drip out. You can use the same recipe that you use to make regular soap for your soap frosting. The only difference is that you want it to be thicker so that when you pipe it, the frosting can hold its shape. Depending on the style of your piping, you want the batter to be stiff enough to hold on the spatula. This will ensure a crisp look. Among the many nozzles available, these are my basic nozzles and the ones I mainly use. Let's have a closer look at each one individually. The round tip is a very common tip. You could basically create this look by just cutting the piping back. The way you can pipe on a cupcake is starting out with a dollop in the middle for support and as a guide, and then pipe one time around. Go into a slightly smaller circle on top 
and finish off by squeezing and lifting the bag at the same time to create a small peak. Another possibility is to start in the center, give it a good squeeze and then moving the nozzle in a circular motion to enlarge the dollop and build another layer on top and then end off by squeezing a bit and then lift off the tip. The French star tip is one of my favorite because of its many teeth that create beautiful details. Here are two ways I want to show you. The first one is to start with a dollop in the middle, then go around it and build the second layer once you reached the other side and then give it a light squeeze before lifting the tip to create a little dome. The other technique is beautiful and very easy for beginners. You hold the nozzle in the center of the cupcake and squeeze generously until the batter reaches the outer edges. You could stop here and just lift the tip or, like I do, give it another lighter squeeze this time to create another dome on top and finish it by lifting the tip. This tip creates a beautiful look with very deep grooves due to the rounded nozzle. Here is an example of how to pipe by starting with the dollop in the middle and then pipe around it, like we have seen before. Or you could just stop after the first layer, leaving a rose type, more flat kind of look. This tip is similar, but the teeth are straight, giving it a slightly different look. You can change the look of the frosting by changing the speed while squeezing out the batter. This is how it turns out with a rather fast pace. Let's try to go a little slower by applying the same pressure. This way you create more ruffles for a fuller look. Leaves are a fun way to decorate your soap. It's always a good idea to practice your piping on a freezer paper or baking sheet. Here is one version of a leaf tip. Depending on the amount you squeeze, you can create different shapes of leaves. If you squeeze and let go of the pressure repeatedly, you can create fuller leaves with curves on them. Here is another type of leaf tip. You can see how easy it is to switch the tips while using the same bag with the coupler. You want to hold the triangles horizontally as well and then squeeze and gently pull the tip away. And by the way, you can massage your piping bag from time to time to keep the consistency pipeable. There are many variations of so-called Russian piping tips. They are very large and can create flowers in one squeeze, instead of having to hand pipe each individual petal. They come with their own coupler, which makes it easy to swap out the design to make different flowers. It's a good idea to practice and get the feel for the respective tip before piping it directly onto your soap. The consistency with the Russian piping tips needs to be even thicker than for regular piping in order for the details to really show. Apply good pressure at the beginning and make sure the batter sticks to the bottom. Then release the pressure and lift the tip. 
this takes a little practice. If you don't like your piping, you can simply scrape it off and pipe again. Piping leaves is a fun way to add colors and interest to your flowers. I add some frosting to the bottom layer to make the piping stick better this time. The same applies for any type of tip that you use. The main point is to make it stick to the bottom and lift it gently to create a design. If the batter is too soft, you won't see the details. And if it's too hard, it won't stick. So it can take a while to get the hang of it. You could also use different Russian piping tips in the same cupcake to create a bouquet, so to speak. In all these examples here, I did add different colors in one piping bag to create a gradient look. You could also just use one color to create a solid look. Some Russian piping tips come with a multi-colored coupler, meaning that the coupler tip is divided in parts and each one can be introduced to a separate piping bag and filled with different colors and then joined together to add the tip you want to use. I like to keep all my piping material in one box. I love see-through boxes in general. This way I can see at one glance what I have and what I'm missing. Here are the Russian piping tips, couplers, my go-to tips, a piping block, flower nails in different sizes, and I also keep the little pre-cut baking sheet squares when I want to hand pipe flowers. If you are interested in other soap making related videos, Check out the playlist on the screen where you can find many more. Feel free to subscribe and see you soon. Bye!